What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Gear There and Everywhere. I'm Dom, and as usual, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Ryan, Sam, Mike, and Paul. But today, we have something different for you. We're bringing in our resident McCartney bass expert, the one, the only, Geo Elmer. Welcome to the show, Geo. Thanks for having me, guys. Really appreciate it. There's no one else would rather have. Oh. It's such an honor to hear. <laughs> and he's a Phillies fan. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So we have three through. Phillies, three Philly dudes. That's born how it changes. Well, Jersey born and raised, but we don't talk so, about that. This is kind of like a an emergency episode. Yeah, definitely the closest to an episode coming out that we're recording. <laughs> what, uh, what happened? Well, Paul's base seems to have been discovered after 50-something years. Uh, the Cavern Base, 1961 Offner, the very first one, which is on the first year of Beatles records. I mean, this is huge. It really is. I mean, it's was rumored to either have been destroyed or lost to time, but it was just in someone's attic. You know, not yeah. too far from Paul McCartney himself, right? Yeah. Like only 15 miles away from Paul. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were saying not too far from his current condition, just left in an attic for 20 years. <laughs> it's not what I was saying, but <laughs> don't quote me on it. They they pull him out of a road case during during his tours. Like, he's not even, like, traveling. He's just in a road case. Taylor Swift. They bring Dust him off. Like a, yeah. Like a cleaning cart. Yeah. Paul got a <laughs> neck reset recently. <laughs> Spinal column was yeah, having this trouble. Is, <laughs> this is big. And, again, we kind of had to pull this together pretty quick. Uh, probably the quickest we've ever pulled together an episode. But I um, figured this would be a good opportunity to go through and, and discuss basically the whole history of McCartney's 61 Hoffner. So, Geo, this is your area of expertise. You know, I understand you have some things written up. I have lots of things, but uh, I think Ryan was going to start it off with uh, with a little bit of like the super early history, and then yeah. we'll just dive into that. Yeah, so, I mean, this is the first bass that Paul really played. Um, I think he probably had messed around with Stu's bass a little bit. Um, the yeah. 505, the uh, Hoffner president, is that right? Yeah, president. Okay. And then, um, yeah, they the, the, pre the president was one of the arch tops, and then, you know, it transferred over the base, and then later on when they started reproducing it, it was called the Reaper Bond base because of the whole thing, but we won't right. get into that. Yeah. Um, and so at this time, Paul, while Stewart was still in the band, this is 1961, uh, they're playing in Hamburg by this point. Um, Paul is now playing his Rossetti guitar, uh, which is the sort of red one with the little uh, tips on it. And that one, uh, we believe, I think is the one that when he would break a string, they ripped the piano strings out and would string it with that. And yeah. of course, that's not good for the neck of a guitar to have a <laughs> heavy piano string on it. And so eventually the neck broke on this thing and they went out and smashed it in the street after that. And Paul <laughs> said, OK, I got no guitar and no money. I guess I'll be the piano player. And so there's a few photos of him in April of 61 playing the piano at um i can't remember which club it is um and so then stewart says he's gonna leave pretty soon and paul says well i guess that means i gotta play bass and so it sounds like from beatles gear that he was in a steinway shop and saw uh, a right-handed hoffner um there possibly had never been a left-handed hoffner ever made at that point or left-handed violin bass anyway yeah, um, it's it's been confirmed by Hoffner that that Paul's was the first left-handed. Oh, okay, produced. just that's throwing awesome. that in there. Yeah, yep. Um, yeah, so he got his custom ordered then, and then the first photos we have of it after that point are in June of '61. So I will pull those up real quick. Kind of going on while Ryan pulls this up. There it is. Um, so yeah, so the whole kind of story with Paul's base was. He, they were in a Steinway shop and he noticed the right-handed Hoffner, obviously. Um, and then, you know, we've all heard the story that he loved uh, 
the the shape and how like i guess I don't, I don't remember the exact term but how even it was on both sides so he's like oh well maybe i'll just flip it and he got to talking with the guy and they said he was left-handed and he the guy said well i could just order you a left-handed base and so that's how that that all came to fruition i wonder if hoffner had to like I guess this stuff wasn't made like on a factory line or anything, so it probably wasn't that difficult to have them change up what they're doing. No, it was all yeah. made by luthiers. It still yeah, is. It, every everything everything's handmade. So for, just from what I I've seen recently, they produce you know the necks and the bodies, and then they don't cut them out because you know they're especially with well with the violin bases they're they're the same shape on each side. So if this one wants to be left handed, they'll just you know grab it and cut it for lefty and all that type of stuff. Um, one thing that was interesting in the book is uh, in Beatles gear is it's mentioned the price of it, which was 25 pounds, um, which uh, I, I wish I could. Can someone, Dom, you want to look up what that is adjusted to today? Yeah. 25 um, pounds to today. Yeah. But Paul had to pay it in like a 10 step payment plan. Oh, wow. <laughs> so they were, they were running low on funds, which is especially funny because later on in the year, 61 is the year that John got 100 pounds for his birthday from some relative, and him and Paul just took a vacation in in, uh, June. Paris, in Paris. Right? Yeah. yeah. Paris, yeah. So, and George was kind of upset about that because he wanted to be making where, more money. Is what that where the whole... 25 pounds? Yeah. 25 pounds, yeah. Is that where the whole Paul Ramon thing, or is that when they went to Ireland? That I think that is the Paul Ramon thing maybe did start there. And they okay. were the Nurk twins, right? Yeah, the Nurk. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Dom is our um, control center, <laughs> like CNN in the background. The guys right. on the computer. So <laughs> I've, you know, tw- I've heard twenty-five pounds. I've heard like you know, like I like I said before we started. It's just it's been so much like telephone line where it's like someone says this, that, and the third. So I've heard three different p- price points. I've heard twenty-five, thirty, and thirty-seven. So, you know, it's within 10 pounds there, which isn't right. that much. But So that base would have costed the same as about 500 bucks. Cheap. Okay. Still cheap. Yeah. Yeah, cheap, especially compared to, like, the Gretches that George was about to be buying. Or the sure. casinos. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, very cheap. We yeah. should say $500 now, not Yeah, 500 Not then. then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a, a sizable amount of money, but not backbreaking. So what's after that? So what? What's the the summer of sixty one is also the uh, the first. Well, one of the first early Beatles recordings is the "Cry for a Shadow" stuff. Now that would have been one of the first recordings on the Cavern Base. Is that right? Um, I, to my knowledge, I believe it. It would be. It would be the sixty one. Um. What do you remember the exact dates for for that? Yeah, let me let me make sure I've got that. Yeah, sorry, I don't I don't mean to. Yeah, because you know the fir- the first picture that we see is from June, mm-hmm. which is the one that you just pulled up with with Stu and Paul both in the same picture. Now I will um, note there's not a, a whole lot of photos. Yeah, it, yeah, it's probably the right one. So, um, the first photo was like June 28th. It looks like Cry for a Shadow was recorded on June 22nd. So, pretty, pretty yeah. uh, likely. Pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Well, because by then. Even the Rossetti would have already been smashed because he was he was playing mm-hmm. piano for 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 a long amount of time because you know yeah. he smashed the um, again smashed the Rossetti. <laughs> yeah, so Stomped on it. Uh, that's probably the first recording that's on. Um, and Tony Sheridan, uh, he was obviously well aware of Paul making this purchase because they were playing with him around this time. Um, yeah. He was yeah he was the one quoted as saying that he thought it was probably Hoffner's first lefty, like he said. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So then Paul's just sort of using it for a while. Um, we can throw up some pictures here and there. We don't need to pull them up right now. Um, mm-hmm. and he uses it f- really without switching to any other base. I think as far as we know, up through yeah. the middle of 63, you could start talking in a second about the back, what the back okay. looks like. From what we know now from, from it being inspected, at the top was like plywood or something like that from what I've heard. So it wasn't like the carved spruce or whatever the I, I don't know the exact wood off the top of my hand. Hoffner started producing the five five hundred one from uh, 50, 57, 58 onwards till about sixty one. All the bases had a flat back, um, and then I don't remember the exact year where they brought the truss rod in, but um, but all the all the bases that didn't have the truss rod had like the super thick 
neck um it it like definitely nothing um like you know kind of like those arch tops that didn't have truss rods just you know compensating for for um you know neck dive or not neck dive but all that type of stuff so it was a super thick neck and then the back um everybody thought around 62 is when hoffner went from the flat backs to the curved back but now uh, knowing now from the pictures that we've seen from paul um paul's base his was a curved back so it looks like around mid 61 um hoffner started going to the curved backs so um you know all the 61 reissues that Hoffner has done, I don't know if you could tell this is my cavern base. Mm -hmm. it, the back is completely flat because that's what they thought Paul's specs were. Um, but obviously, like I said before, now we know that it's a curved back. Um, and then, yeah, so from mid-61 on is when they started doing the, the curved backs. Um, so, yeah, so Paul's base is kind of like an oddity with being the plywood top and the curved back. And then um, it still had like the super, super chunky neck. Um, and then you can see that, like, even in Get Back, you could just see how bulky the neck is, um, which gives it a bit of an interesting tone, too. It's, like, it's small, notable things, but, you know, it's it's just all great stuff. Okay. Well, cool. Let me let me pull up some pictures. Done with my tangent there. <laughs> my... Before we go on with that, Gio, what base is that? Oh, so my base. Um, so my base here. Thank you for asking. Uh, this is like, I guess in 97 from what I've told, uh, it's one of the earlier reissues that Hoffner did. Um, it's considered a music ground bass. Um, so it, it was uh, before Hoffner like got into completely doing the, um, uh, the reissues, there was a shop in London that would uh, take, take like vintage bodies and mismatch them, put new necks on them and they would sell them off as real ones, but that we won't get into that. Um, so music ground started reproducing bases. Uh, and so this one is a later music ground because the earlier ones had like, just, they looked super vintage. Um, so this one that I got about two or three years ago, um, when I got it, it had uh, like the pickups were closer together. So I moved these pickups um, I had to replace the uh, the pick guard too, um, and then uh, the neck isn't accurate because it has one of those like thinner pencil necks, like they say. Um, and then it came with the strip tuners, which uh, Paul's didn't have, so I put the the rugby tuners on there. But um, and then it has a flat back, like I mentioned before. So yeah, this is one of like the earlier reissues um, from from the '90s, and then uh, you know I did my own type of stuff to it, try to make it accurate. I remember when you got that. I mean, the burst is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. There's like the uh, the burst sir was it was like a real thing. Like people, um, you know, because you don't have many colored pictures of Paul's first base, so you don't really know what the uh, what the finish is like. So we'll we'll move on so that we can talk more about Paul's base and not mine. Can we hear a little bit of it before we do? Play us some "All My Loving." Uh, "All My Loving," sure thing. Uh, can you hear it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Good. So. Uh, There we go. Gorgeous. Awesome. It's got like a thump to it that the other Hoffner doesn't have. Yeah, that that's where the middle pickup comes in. Yeah, it's very distinctive. Um, okay, so this is the first EMI session that we have photos of. And this is uh, September 4th of 62. So this is the, uh, I believe, Ringo's first. No, that would be. Yeah, that's right. This is Ringo's first time in the studio, I think. So this is the like test Love version of Love Me Do, yeah. Um, and obviously, uh, we'll we'll show some comparisons maybe a little bit later. But um, the main differences with Paul's bass here are that the pickups are closer together. The, I assume the neck pickups in about the same spot, and then the yeah. the other pickup is much closer to the neck pickup. Um, yes, yeah, so it's it's in a middle position, and then um, in '62, that's when they move the pickup back. And then we'll see if we can find another more clear photo of the headstock where you can see this Hoffner logo the, here. But there'll be yeah, okay, photos later. yeah, the the vertical the vertical Hoffner logo, as um, opposed to the uh, to the to the horizontal one that come on the bases later on. And the knobs are slightly different. Is that right, or are they the same? No, the, the, these are the same uh, okay. T top knobs. 
And obviously the pick guard had to be cut a little different because yes. of the, that. So, yeah. Um, so Paul's pick guard w- uh, came out a little wider. So if, just going back to mine. So you could see how they're like the body's a little more exposed um, on here. And then on Paul's, it was kind of like, it kind of uh, came out a little more closer to the body and it was a lot thicker. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What about um on the cavern they just found? Did that does it have the fret markers on top so you know the player can look down and see him? Because I know Paul's base that he has now doesn't have those. Uh, you know what? I actually haven't. I didn't I don't think pay it attention. Does. That's a good. Yeah, I don't think it does. You know, Hoffner's didn't come stock with them until until later on in like the seventies. But yeah, bless uh, his soul for not having that. And you see pictures. He never had the fret indic. Oh man, I would be able to do it. Yeah, it's you know it's 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 a good thing for musicians too, uh, to to have that because it, like it kind of gets you away from looking at your fretboard, but uh, you do play a lot of bum notes. I'll admit, it's like a fretless bass almost. Yeah. yeah this is just to show that on March fifth, uh, sixty three, he's using it. This is the from me to you session. This is from me to you. Thank you, girl, and one after nine oh nine. Um, if we go a little farther, just so we can see when he stops using it, that's a BBC session. Skip a little part there. This is. Oh, are you trying to go from when? Yeah, I'm just going to go all the way. So, when do the tuners change? Okay. So, um, this is She Loves You session, by the way. This is July yeah, 1st. July. Oh, okay. And you could see the tape on the on the pickup, too, but we'll get into that in a, in a second. Yeah. yeah that um, second pickup already looks darker there, too. It's, yeah, it's, it's got tape on it. Or, or well, is it the middle outer, pickup? Be the second pickup looks yeah. darker than the first one. Yeah, do you want to talk yeah. about the uh, the tuners and then the tape the on the tuners. pickup? Yeah, so um, so here, let me just go to my script here. Uh, so here we go. Um, by early 63, Paul's bass uh, fell in, into dis- disrepair um, in pictures in live shows. And I even think it was the Royal Albert Hall uh, show that they did in April of 63. You can see Paul's D-string tuner was broken off. So the stock... Um, the stock rugby ball tuners, as they're called, the D string was uh, like the peg itself was broken off, and um, and so it was just like the metal piece that goes through the little plastic, and so there was like speculation that Mal and Paul would have to use a pair of pliers to tune the bass and all that type hmm. of stuff, um, and so in summer of '63, I don't know if Paul took it in or Mal took it in, um, but they had the uh, the tuners replaced. And those are the tuners that you see now, uh, the white, uh, I think the company's Waverly tuners. Um, and those from, from my research that I've done, it looks like those tuners came from like forties and fifties era Gibsons. So those, uh, like the ones that you see on like the early Les Paul juniors and all that type of stuff. Um, those, those are the Waverly tuners. Okay. So let's see if we can see those in this photo here. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, you can see that there. Let me see if I can yeah, you... clear a photo. What was the date on these? Yeah, this was she this is July you. first. The dates. Okay, July first. Yeah. Um, let's see. Can we see it there? You can definitely see it's not the same. And you can see it's on backwards too. Even look at the look at the E and the A string. You can see that the uh, like the um, oh yeah, the, whatever the components are are out are on the other upside side. Down. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's weird. How they still look today? Yeah, how they still are today. Um, there's a better one. Is that George Martin? So yeah. yeah. So yeah. this one's still the rugby ball, right? Yeah, that is actually. That's pretty. That's weird. interesting. I didn't. I've never noticed that. That's you know. There's always a, a, a first for something. Wait. Seriously. Maybe it's just a shadow because because on the on the one now it, it they all have the same tuners besides that. Who knows? But yeah, hmm. you're right. That does look like a rugby ball. Yeah. They. Something weird's going on there. Um, yeah. Because there's a weird I know, that's... artifact going yeah. on up here or something. I don't know what yeah, the there happened too. there. Um, yeah, you know, it could just be the reflection from the tuner and when yeah. when the picture was <laughs> Tell taken. Tell something from that picture. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's... Oh. Well, there you go. Hey, there's a color photo. Look at that. Yeah. So, where the rugby ball... Why is this yellow? <laughs> that, yeah, that's, why is that? that is... I haven't... What is is that, that what the rugby ball tuners look like? Were they that color? No, the the no the rugby they're not cl- they weren't clear white, but they're still not they're not okay. yellow like that. So I'm not sure that what that maybe the rugby ball was so, left on and and it, it got replaced later on. But I've never heard anything 
anything about oh. that. From my understanding, all tu all the tuners were replaced. Okay, let's keep going. Let's see. Oh, there we go. That's a good one. Yeah. So there oh. we go. You could you could yeah. see. And he, look, it even looks a different shape in this. Big. I just think that it's all like the angle and him, you know, because Paul would like bob around and you know move the neck as he was playing. But even here, you can see how thick the neck is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah chunky. Yeah. Very chunky. Yeah. I really hope one of these photos it's like has an obvious rounded back. Because that would <laughs> be funny. That would be hilarious. Um, Paul, That's a cool uh, photo. Yeah, we can talk about the, the, the taping of the pickup now. Yeah, talk about you, that. If you want to go so there. what's going on with the tape so, here? Okay, so I, I'm not too sure what the exact story is, if the base was dropped or... Or, or something like that but um it seems like the uh so the way that the hoffner pickup mounts are um on the german bases and on the contemporary bases the it's it's just a, a plastic mount and it gets held in with two small screws on the top of the body and the plastic is like i, I don't even know it, it's just it's super thin plastic so they're known to break um and so i'm sure that maybe the base was dropped or something and uh and you could you could see that uh, it he to put like electrical tape on it um, to hold it down to the body. At first, he tried to use scotch tape, and I could pull up a picture like a super close up of the pickups where you can see the scotch tape on like the mm. uh, on the edge of the pickup here. Um, uh, yeah, and so and so it looks like I guess he dropped it, and the pickup mount was was um, was hanging off, and so he just took uh, some electrical tape and taped it to the body to try to keep it in place because. Again, in that picture that I could pull up, you can see that instead of the the pickup um, the pickup sitting kind of not flat but like almost flat, it's kind of at an angle like this now because it was you know dropped and it's being taped down. Um, can I see that Scotch quick question for you photo. on this picture I had up? Uh, so just to talk about the the switch configuration here, it looks like yep. up down up. And can you show us what that yeah. would be on your base? Yeah. So um, up down up. So. I think here. I saw that right. Yeah, that you're right. So I just put it in there, and then that would be, that would. Add... Right, so and up then... down up was the neck pickup, and that's the configuration that he uses on his on his current base. Neck pickup so, here, and no just... middle pickup, and then no middle pickup. The other the other selection is rhythm slash solo, correct? Solo, yeah. So it's on solo, and that just basically means it's a little louder, right? Yeah. And that's I, I did he ever use that middle pickup? There's been speculation that he did on the cavern base, um, and then you can see it kind of gives like a, a bit of a I'm trying to see because I had one of these pickups. Okay, now it's all now they're both on. Yeah, can you turn just the middle pickup on? Yeah. Uh... Yeah, it's it's not sounding too much different because I mean they're both kind of neck pickups, I guess. It's a bit more, more yeah. trebly. Um, it's a bit more trebly, but a even more trebly. Yeah. On the sixty-three bases, when it's moved down or uh, moved down towards the bridge, it's just like you. It's uh, personally, it's unbearable. I can't, I can't stand that sound. It kind of sounds like it kind of sounds like silly love songs, like on the Rick. Like mm -hmm. it's that, like just you know, trebly disgusting. Yeah, but song. nobody uses yeah, like the bridge that. pickup on a Hoffner. Yeah. Right. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, let's keep going. So you said the Wait, tuners. No. Show. Uh, go yeah, scotch, scotch tape. tape photo. So it's um, uh, where is it here? There it is. Share. Hey. Okay. Oh, there we go. Do you see it? Yeah. When is yeah. this photo from? Oh, I. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. <laughs> that looks like late um, sixty-three, sometime probably. Yeah, yeah, like mid to late sixty-three. I've never seen so that photo it's before. This... It's this picture, and then um, I think he's wearing the collar of a suit, but that's beside the point. Um, so anyway, uh, Paul, he's holding his head up against the base, and then you can see this right under here. I don't know if you can see my cursor. Mm -hmm. That looks like just like bundled bu bundled up scotch tape. Um, yeah. You know, held on there, and then obviously you can see the electrical tape, like gaff electrical tape, whatever it is, like holding it down to the body. I was sort of wondering, yeah, really. with based on the pictures we have of it now, the mm. middle pickup looks a lot more like reddish now or gold. Yeah, I was yeah, wondering if that's just tarnished. rusting because the other one had the tape on it for so long and didn't rust as much or something. Well, well, no, because uh, there, there, I, there was a picture we were looking at earlier where you can see that 
the shade of the picture pickup actually gets um uh it got changed that middle pickup to gold and i think it's just being being tarnished and i guess sweat and the chrome plating came off of the pickup so that pickup is already gold in 63 i okay. was shocked that we could see that yeah i uh yeah. noticed that too yeah it was discolored that early was it on. that that she loves you photo that i showed you yeah uh, oh okay. yeah i think it was yeah so here uh we're here's here's another cool picture you could see oh, yeah, the tape real obvious there yeah the tape on the on the pickup um and then right there and then uh here's here's the one picture i don't i think this is the real albert hall performance and then you could see the d-string tuners is missing let me try to can you go oh, yeah. back one photo real quick uh this one here what is ringo doing in front of him oh wow good photoshop oh this is the bbc yeah it's bizarre anyway continue. yeah yeah their setup for the bbc was always weird like they were like on the side of a stage somewhere or something like that but that's um funny yeah anyway oh that's as far as another, but you can see you can clearly see that the d-string tuner is missing mm -hmm. yeah um Okay, you know, it so stupid with the uh, pickup. I wonder if possibly when they made his bass, they just used a bunch of different parts, and maybe the pickups were different years apart, and maybe then they were using a different manufactured cover that had a different type of metal in it. That's why it has that type of a color. Um, well, so so the thing is that I'm, they're I'm both. Digging. Okay, yeah, they're both the Hoffner blade or not the blade pickups, the um the, the diamond pickups. So it had the diamond logo, um, and then it has etched in you know Hoffner and and all that type of stuff. So I believe that they're the original pickups. Um, How many years did they make those though? They made uh, like fifty. No, no. So so it was either nineteen nineteen sixty fifty nine and sixty. So the early fifties Hoffners came with like the, they, they call them like the lollipop type or not the, uh, the lipstick pickups. Yeah. Uh, like there's plenty of other guitars that, that use them, but Hoffner used them um, throughout the fifties. And then I believe in 59 and 60, they went over to like the toaster style pickups um, that you could see they're a little more rare. Um, and then from 60 on to 62 uh, is when you have the dot, the diamond pickups, okay. and then in '62 you see the iteration with the with the uh, staples. But anyway, so yeah, never mind. If it was only in '60, that means a year later. Yeah, it wouldn't. Have yeah, been. '60, '61. Okay. Yeah. So well, let's let, we could talk about you know we talked about she loves you, love me do, um, and then please please me. That was obviously exclusively mm -hmm. used on please please me and with the Beatles. Yeah. So everything that would have been recorded up to this point is. Um... Like he said, "Love Me Do," "Please Please Me" single. Then the whole "Please Please Me" album, uh, "She yeah. Loves You," and then "And I'll Get You," and uh, "From Me to You," and all of "With the Beatles" was recorded. And then a little bit later, they recorded uh, "I Want to Hold Your Hand" in this boy. And so, and this boy. if we go and back so to uh, let me just add on to that before we mm -hmm. um on that same day that when they came in for that session they started off with uh you've really got a hold on me so they did one take of you really got a hold on me but it was it, they weren't really getting anywhere with it so they scrapped that so on that take of you really got a hold on me uh oh, okay. it was this the second hofner paul's new 63 oh okay interesting yeah yeah so the last day that we see the or the last day in early times that we see the uh, the 61 Hofner is here on October 4th for a recording of Ready, Steady, Go. So early when they first get there, it seems like Paul has the new Hofner out. The new Hofner, yep. Which is a 63 Hofner, and that one obviously notably different because the Hofner logo is different and it has staple pickups. The position of the pickups has changed, uh, or the one yep. pickup has changed. And then a little bit later in the uh, rehearsal, he pulls out the 61 Hoffner, which we can see here. And then for the actual taping of the show, uh, you can see he uses the 63 Hoffner. So, yeah, kind of interesting. Oh, and, and he's using a pick too, because there's that one, mm -hmm. there's that one when they do, or maybe that's, maybe that was a different taping where they do Mr. Postman and he's sitting there playing with his thumb like this. Mm. You, you, you know what I'm referring to? I think maybe. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't remember if it was th if this was the same day or not. Anyways. Um Yeah, and then after this, the well the reason that he got that uh the 63 Hofner on top of I'm sure the pickup falling out and things 
um, he was thinking like, okay, I should probably have a backup for live performances now. So I'll get this one. And then he starts using the 63 one as his main Hoffner. And that's the one that he used on Ed Sullivan and things. Um, and then yep. the other Hoffner stays as a backup and we see yep. it behind him uh, on the back of the stage for quite a while. Let me, let me just backtrack a bit. Yeah. So, um, so obviously October 4th, Paul gets his new Hoffner and then through, through that schedule from October until, um, until early uh, spring or not early spring, late winter, early spring, like around the Sul- Sullivan show, I think before they left for the Sullivan show, actually um, Paul, you know, the second, uh, the second or the first Hoffner was rendered as the backup. And then you could see those pictures of, you know, John and Paul holding it kind of like a violin. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. yeah those pictures. Um, yeah. You could edit them in post or whatever. Um, so you see those pictures. And so that was obviously kept as the backup. So right before the Beatles left for the Ed Sullivan, or maybe when they got back, I don't know the exact timeline because there's no real, like, like definitive answer. Um, Mal, Mal or Paul brought the bass to sound city in London. And so they said, Hey, could you, you know, repair this? Because obviously the pickup was falling out. Um, and, and all this, all this. Are you saying that was in February that they took it to sound city? I, I don't I don't know the like don't quote me exactly I think it was either early spring or or late winter. Okay, I because I know when he got it back. July eleventh was the first first time that it was photographed back. Right. Do you have a Do you have a different date of? No, when I just exactly had that. You got him. Okay. Yeah. So um so you know the history the history with the uh, with the repair it was sent into Sound City. Um, you know, they fabricated the new pickup mount, which you see the big bulky black one that was supposedly made of wood, um, they were saying. Um, so instead of the two separate the two separate uh, pickup mounts, it's just one whole pickup mount that holds yep. both pickups in. Um, and then the base was completely stripped and sanded down um, and then refinished. We don't – nobody really knows exactly who uh, decided to have it refinished, um, which uh, – People, people are assuming that it was just uh, like off the cuff type of thing. Like, oh, let's just make it look nicer. Let's put a new finish on it. And then they do that three tone fender uh, burst, the clown burst or whatever they, uh, whatever it was called. Um, and so actually it's, it's interesting because we know this now from when Nick was went and inspected the base, the, uh, the electronics were completely changed when it was, uh, when it was refurbished. So instead of having a 61 control panel, it has a 64 control panel, obviously in 1964 when they, when they refurbished it. Um, okay. Yeah. So they, they did the whole refurbishing, um, you know, put the new pickup mount on it, cut out the, the pick guard to, to accommodate that big mount um, and then stripped it, refinished it, put a new uh, control panel in it. And then where we go from here is where, where Ryan has, has it on July 11th. Uh, yeah. Is this so ready, steady, go your, again? Thank your lucky stars. Thank you, lucky stars. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, so sorry. it was it was refinished, you said, in spring 64, so when they were making a hard day's night. It was that yeah. early? I didn't yeah. know that. That's Ryan, crazy. if you go down, is there a picture of the back of it? Like, is it curved? Can we see that one? Yeah, the color one. Up. Oh. Just curious if you can make out. Like, if you can tell. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't think you can really tell. No. Hmm. Let's see if there's any others in here. But anyway, yeah. So he uses he uses it here, and then he uses it later for the performance. Um. And you know, I've tried I've tried everything, like to the best of my ability, to try to to see if there's any archived footage of it. But it seems that it was all you know just scrapped. Oh, and that's oh wow, that's that same day. I didn't know that. Oh wait, these. This is the same day. Wow. Mm. There it is. EB was it EB two? EB two. Yeah, the EB two, I believe. Weird base. Yeah. yeah. And so there we go. They're in there. I've never seen that one before. Oh wow! Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another one where he's standing. Cl- oh, this one. Yeah. That was a very scary okay. face. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, you're scrolling too damn fast. Slow down. <laughs> yeah, I've never scroll- seen these before. I mean, yeah. that base just looks way cooler. Than the it does. It, it does. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm I like think the mounting myself. bracket looks kind of ugly. I'll get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, is this, this is probably the same pick guard, though, but just with a chunk cut out 
right? Yeah, yeah, I, I believe it. Well, it, it 100% is because, like I mentioned before, it had that weird cut. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a little bit different. It that's, was different. That's yeah. a cool photo. That yeah, 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 is great. The three-tone We're... burst just suits it. And you could see great, how yeah. thick the neck is, too. Yeah. The three-tone burst looks a lot... Is this the rehearsal lot... or is this the actual No, this film? is the performance. Oh, wow. The three-tone burst looks a lot better here than it does later. <laughs> Yeah, and the the another thing to mention was the uh, like the toothpick. Oh, I've never seen this picture before. Maybe I had. I don't know. But Maybe yeah, a chunky neck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was the the toothpaste or radio knobs that were uh, that were put on the uh, on the control panel? So instead of having the regular uh, teacup knobs that that all ho most Hoffners came with, it had like this like radio like kind yeah, of like a toothpaste go. cap. Yeah. And those oh, really yeah. didn't la those really didn't last long because you know as we move on to pictures from '65, um, you could see uh, that they're changing. Well, Brian, back can you too. zoom in on the knobs real quick? Yeah, so we can see. Stop scrolling so damn fast. Yeah. Hey, they're <laughs> nice and crisp on my end. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, oh gosh. Some of us read at a Go secondary back up. level. Go back up. Go back no, up. Down here. Yeah, you're wrong direction. Yeah. I think it was done below this right huh i should have opened it in a new tab you have way too many oh tabs already and dizzy there you go there we go yeah you could see the radio knobs oh yeah that jack is going in in a weird spot what am i what am i seeing there? i can't even i can't huh. even see it Oh no! I'm oh, seeing the illusion. background. Never mind. There's no Jack there. This is this is just yeah, he's a not TV plugged performance, in. right? Yeah. Duh. Um, they play on this show? No, no. This they were miming. Why well, not? But what did they? What did they play? Oh, I I've got no clue. I think it said it's... Long Tall Sally. There was some text down there that said yeah, it. I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. Right Long uh, Tall Sally. Hard Day's Night. Hard things night. we said today. And you don't have to do that <laughs> for Beatles song. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is all translated, translated from, yeah. from Russian to English, so it's all <laughs> things we talked about today. Yeah. <laughs> um, kind of funny. Yeah. So Long that's... vertical salad. Yeah. And then uh, nothing really to talk about until. Well, I don't know. Well, is there anything no, else to talk on. about until no, there is? Until this. Well, there I was going to say until December second of the next year. Of sixty five. Yeah. Well, yeah, there is. Yeah. What else is there? Um, take, well, take Dom, if you had something to say, he used it. Yes, yeah, so that was the main backup, uh, yeah. and you could you could see well that um, you could see it like leaned up behind the amp, like sitting yeah. up against the bass cab. Do you uh, have any I have a photos picture of for... that? You want to show? Yeah, I do. Um, well, I lost my mouse there for a second. I have a picture from uh, from their Las Vegas show during their '64. Um, I don't I don't have any offhand of the. Um, uh, of it leaning up behind the amp, but I That's have funny. this picture here. There it is. Right here. This is uh, in Las Vegas. Yeah, that's a great comparison on the bursts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can see it, and I believe those are the teacups al tea tea teacups already. But, you know, it's it's a little grainy to, to kind of tell. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so the bass was either leaned up or laying on the ground. Um uh yeah. Donna, see stand. where were all those police yeah, officers? I was say, when that's was a stand. Being stolen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, One of the rare times the Beatles used a music stand or a yeah. guitar stand. Yeah. Yeah. So so it was obviously rendered as the backup. It was during their like summer tour when they played. You know, they played almost every U.S. city. Um, and so I don't remember the exact date. I think it was two days after Shea Stadium, so August of 1965. There's audio um, of this. Uh, so Paul, uh, I forget what, what the second to last song was, but they're playing the song and he breaks a string on his on his mm -hmm. main 63 bass. And then you can hear uh, Paul, well, you can't hear Paul, but you hear John, you know, talking on the mic. And, I can and John goes like, you want to hear it. yeah. Oh, it's the Atlanta it. show, right? Yeah. Yeah. The Atlanta show. This two is, days we after we recently Stadium. talked about this. Was our... that the Atlanta show? The famous one where the sound was apparently incredible and they, yeah. they love the monitors. They could hear themselves. Yeah. Um, 
So maybe Paul was getting too intense about it and broke the string. <laughs> he was so yeah. excited to hear him. Yeah. Oh, it was, boy. and it was right before I want to be your and man. Too. Nick has a, Nick Martellaro has a great video on this. Um, yeah. Let's see if we can find Nick his, is steal great, his uh, audio. Does, where does he play it? That's a beautiful bass. Wow. So here it is. This is uh, the Atlanta show. Am I, and the I'm bass not, is. I'm not sharing audio. Hang on. So the bass is behind the amp, um, you know, leaning up like we mentioned before. Thanks, Nick, for putting the text in. Uh, we'll have to wait a minute now while Paul changes his bass. He's broken the string, have you? What are you going to do? Keep talking, most of us say. Well, it's simply wonderful to be here, you know, and it's so good. I can't think of anything to say, so why don't you just hum and talk to yourselves for a bit? Go on. Usually it's better love... banter than that. Yeah. I always love John's, you know, oh, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> keep talking, keep talking. What, George, you know? <laughs> you know, you come know. on, say something. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, he, he breaks the string and then changes changes the bass. And so that's the only time that uh, that it's known that he played the bass live mm -hmm. uh, besides, you know, J July 11th. But there's sadly no pictures uh, from that. Everybody loves to take pictures besides the one time that you need pictures. <laughs> um, um, and then is the next big news December? Yeah, December. Yep. Do we want to let Paul take over on this? Go right ahead. This is this is this is possibly the bigger breaking news. Maybe on your than, than tinfoil hats, everyone. <laughs> Even having been found, There's, this is big stuff here. They were on their way to uh, the set of performances that they were going to do for their show. This is December second. Yep. And then so what ended up happening was they had a bunch of guitars strapped to the, their car they were driving in. I know in the group chat we're in, supposedly it was up to like nine or 12 guitars or something were strapped to this cu this car. But supposedly there was two guitars in question that were strapped to the back of the, the car. Now, of course, both people say and numerous people that were there say that only one of the guitars fell off the back of the car. So when they were driving to the show, of course, like I said, one of the guitars popped off and a lorry, one of these big 18 wheelers or whatever it is, ran it over. And when they went to, back to go look at it, they realized it was George's country gentleman. Now, Beetle Gearbook has it listed as it being the dial up country gentleman because, of course, George had two country gentlemen, the dial up first, and then six months later, he bought the dual flip up mute gent. So, if you think about it, um, it, what was on the ground was the country gentleman. They're all saying it, it's the country gentleman. Now, with Paul's bass just being found, we have close-up pictures of the tuning peg key. And that is clearly... Well, and hold on, back wreck. up. So what happened a few days all later? Right. So, now, so now when... All right, so yeah, I'm sorry. I know I'm jumping all over the place. Yeah, it's good. See, Ryan, good thing you're here. Good thing <laughs> you're here to fo refocus me. <laughs> So when the guitar fell off and broke into pieces, they picked up a few of these pieces off of the ground. And one of these pieces so happens to be a tuner tuning peg. Now, a few days after this, just I think six days later, Paul's cavern bass needs a new tuning peg. So they use, where's my hot water thing wants to go off like the wrong time. <laughs> wants to use the this tuning peg that they got off of the ground. Now, Neil Aspinall and Mal both say the same exact thing. It was a Gretsch on the ground that got destroyed, and they grabbed the tuning peg from that Gretsch and used it on the Hoffner. Now, with the pictures that have come across, the tuning peg is clearly a tuning peg from a Gretsch, Tennessee. It's the same tuning peg that you, Ryan, have on your Tennessee. Yeah, I'll put a photo up. And... At that, too, it's not like it's from any random Tennessean or anything like that either. Because now, Dom, you even mentioned, or I think, Gio, you mentioned the fact that we looked into this tuning peg and possibly it was on some early, early Gibsons from the 50s, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, it doesn't matter because Mal and Neil are both saying they it's this tuning peg they picked up off the ground, and that's what they used from a Gretsch. And it's clearly from a Tennessee. The Tennessean has gone. It never shows up ever again in Tennessee last shows anyway. up in November 2nd so you're never seen after that 
So that tuning key is clearly from Tennessee. Now, again, you're a Tennessean, has it, Ryan? And I think all right up until mid-64. Mm-hmm. And then my Tennessean doesn't have it. Mine switched to a different style. And Sam, you have the same thing on your 67 as what I have. So again, it is a pretty specific tuning key. And again, they both say they know where it came from. Now, my th- now I think that's that's all we have to say on, right? Is there any other things to cover uh, on yeah. that? I just wanted to wanted to sorry, Ryan, can I jump in just yeah. one second? So um going back to when Paul mentioned about like, you know, the fifties and, and forties Gibsons. Um, so I was talking about the uh, the tuners that were changing to Paul's bass in uh, in summer of '63. So the the chrome or the nickel tuner, those were I, I believe exclusively Gretsch. From what I was reading, I think Gretsch were were the only ones that were using that around that time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, but to sum all that up, basically, we know what's been stated forever is that a Gretsch country gentleman got destroyed, and then in Mal's account and Neil Aspinall's account. Tuners were picked up, or at least one was picked up, and then Paul's 61 Hoffner had a tuner replaced. Uh, and that tuner, which is still on it, is absolutely off of a Gretsch Tennessean. Um, yep. So the conclusion so now, is it was a Gretsch Tennessean that got destroyed. So it might have been, yeah, but, that's what it sort of seems like now, even though no one's ever said that. But I think more so, though, and I'd almost start to bet money on this, is the fact that both got destroyed. That's why Mal and Neil are right. They saw a country gentleman. They saw the thing. Because again, the country gentleman and Tennessean have the same exact case. It's the, a little bit bigger on the country gentleman, but it's the same lining, that red burgundy lining. We, they all have the same case in the 60s. Yes. all the same stuff. We'll have so to do a more... So when that thing got destroyed by that Lori 18-wheeler, it all got mixed up, all those pieces. And that's yeah. why the two cases, yeah. you see it all the parts mixed up. Well, Mal and sense. Neil weren't gearheads either. I bet they saw That's Gretsch true. and guests. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't want to dwell on this too long because I think this maybe deserves its own episode. But um, yeah, the fact of the matter is the t- the tuner on the Hoffner is absolutely a Tennessean tuner, specifically from yeah. a '63 Tennessean. Um, yes. Yeah. So we can get into more of that controversy, but you know, argue about that in the comments. Maybe the Tennessean got destroyed, but I've we've never we heard got breaking else news here. Yeah, one hundred percent got destroyed. You we thought the Hoffner first. was the only breaking news. Breaking news about guitars breaking. <laughs> so that brings us to sixty six. Wasn't there something there? The Hoffner just sort of, I assume, keeps getting used as a backup through sixty six, and then, and, uh, and then nothing until sixty nine, right? There's a couple of photos of Paul tuning it backstage in Philadelphia. Yeah. So actually we could talk about this. I have these pictures as well, but um, so, you know, let's just, let's just stay on this just for one second. Obviously this can get cut out um, if, if, if need be. So uh, the, the bass was just, you know, all their instruments were in poor conditions, just thrown up against amps. Like you can see on the Sullivan show after Paul's done yesterday or Maybe it was a night out in Blackpool. He yeah. puts the he puts the Texan down and it just falls over. Collapses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so like it was just their gear was like they didn't give a crap about their gear. So I'm I'm sure that there's there was plenty of falls. So the D string tuner ended up breaking again, and that's where the the nickel tuner comes into play. It was just put on, I guess, from Mal Evans parts bin. So we we first see it in December when it's uh, sitting in that closet, and you could see the nickel tuner. Yeah. Um, Isn't this exactly and, the same time John's 325 the neck broke and yeah. he used the um, 1996 on stage? Yeah, the it's like Rose the same exact time, right? Yeah. Christmas 64? No, we're talking about 65 now. Yeah. Uh, the, that, well, that you, was You are talking about 64, though. Okay, never mind. Uh, Rose was it 64 or 64? Rose Morris was 64. Christmas okay. 64. My bad. Yeah. And I'll show you those pictures from Philadelphia that, that Dom was referring to. Um, the last time we see it until 69, uh, until 68. 68. All right for revolution. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, actually some fun facts to know and tell. Um, uh, so this is backstage, uh, at JFK stadium in Philadelphia on, uh, I believe it was August 15th or 16th. Um, so you could see that the pickguard is off of the base. And this is the same day that we first see, uh, the 63 without the pick guard. So they did a show, I believe the day before in Washington, DC. And that's the last time that the, 
that the 63 was photographed with a pit guard. And then the next day when they were in Philadelphia, um, they, uh, the pit guards were taken off. So that's, uh, people, people kind of speculate that the pit guards would have, uh, broken off, but it, it, it kind of, it kind of makes sense that they were just like moving away from the pit guards. George took the pit guard off of his casino. Um, and so Paul took the pit guard off of both of his Hoffners on the same day. So this is him, I guess, playing around with the backstage. Um, and then you can see, you know, the D, the D tuner, mm-hmm. the D string nickel tuner and all that type of stuff. So, nice. so, so we're at 66 now they're doing the whole tour um on that tour paul had three back uh two backup bases he had his rickenbacker and he had uh his second hoffner um so after 66 after they stopped touring candlestick park um i think you know everything was sent back to sent back to abbey road um and it was just kept in storage uh you know you could see this there's plenty of pictures of that storage closet when the Aravons, you know, were taking pictures and all that type of stuff later on, but it's that same kind of storage closet. Uh, and so I believe it was kept in storage all throughout, you know, pepper and, and, uh, um, mystery tour and all that stuff. And then they did, uh, the David Frost show, uh, in 68. I don't know if any of you know the, the exact date off, off, off the cuff. It says here that it was filmed in September and then it first aired on Frost on September 8th, David Frost in the UK, and then Smothers Brothers in, on October 6th later. So that was like the American. Yeah. And then the next one, Revolution, was on October 13th, the weekend. Yeah. After. So these were filmed in September for David Frost. And these were the first pe- the first guys in America to have it. Right. I just have some cool screenshots of uh, Revolution. Wonder yeah, what happened um, to their collaboration with Ed Sullivan. Like he was still active in '68. Wonder why they went with his mother's brother. Maybe because he had the Dave Clark Five on too many times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he wasn't I just more applicants. Pull these oh, together, yeah. but yeah, it's um, you know, super nerdy thing that shirt that Paul's wearing. Him and John like shared it interchangeably, which is kind of a funny thing. But <laughs> where did John wear it? Like, have you seen? Um, like yeah, I've, I think video. it was in studio pictures that uh, they were both. Um, I don't remember what it was, but I remember that was like a point that we brought up one time when we were talking about it. Uh, they were saying, oh, well, you know, Paul and John shared shared a wardrobe. You can the see hem- the big hem- oh, yeah, the foam, foam, mute, the foam mute, which yeah. appears in a, a few months later in Get Back. I can show those as well. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one shot, though, that was like you can kind of see the back i thought that was interesting yeah that's... it looks kind of flat but you know it's hard yeah, to tell um, well his, his there... does look flat though ryan you should overlay of course what it looks like today it still does look pretty flat i mean All it's right, not yeah. like a typical I only got one day to edit bulge. this let's not get too crazy <laughs> yeah. yeah that's another let's not one get too carried away um, um and then do I we have, have a reason things. like why he pulled this out nostalgia I... yeah i think that was the the main thing was was nostalgia. Obviously, he was favoring the uh, the during um, during the White Album. You know, he had the the jazz bass, the Rick, and um, and he had his sixty three Hofner, which I don't think there's any Hofner on um, uh, on the White Album. So I, I think Michael brings up a great point. It's nostalgia. This is when he starts pulling out the Hofners again and starts using them. Can you imagine if he just used the jazz bass on this show? That'd be wild. <laughs> that would be too. It's too heavy. That that was one of the reasons too. He always loved yeah. how light the Hoffner was. Yeah. Um. Okay, Sam. You want to get into get back? Um. Yeah. While I'm while I'm there. Um. And it's also worth noting that he also had the Epiphone Rivoli bass, right? Um. Yeah. I don't Rivoli. know when that was, but um, the first day of get back is January second, sixty nine, and you can see. He has the uh, the Gretchen softener out. Um, there it is. Um, the foam mute was on it, and uh, that's actually January third. So this is a combination of the first two days, and then I think on. So that January second and third, I think the third was a Friday. So they reconvene on the sixth on a Monday, and then that's when he brings the sixty three back. Um, yep. So this is January third, Friday. Um, and this is when they're kind of playing all those old songs that they wrote, John and Paul wrote together. Um, I was curious, though, is this the 63? This is yeah, gotta be. It is. It has the tape wound. You can see the yellow uh, 
I was yeah. just going to say it's got to be because it doesn't have the Gretsch tuner. The set list, right? Yeah, the tuners. Set right. list, yeah. yeah. So I guess four white tuner. This is the first day of get back. So he does have both, both. Hoffners yep. on those days. Yeah, the strip tuners. Strip. The strip tuners, yeah. Yeah. But and, he really and this favored has a two piece the... neck instead of the three piece like the, uh, mm. like the yeah. other Hoffner does. Yeah. Oh, okay. I really don't know that much about Hoffners, but I, I just have <laughs> these. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> it's a cool strap, too, that he had. Oh, yeah. Um, I love I love those. those strap you can really so see good. the red reef mm -hmm. in on the back here and the metal tuner. Oh, yeah. You can yep. see them being upside down like that. That's so interesting. I somehow never noticed yeah. that before today. Great shot so, headstock there. Yeah, just really clean shots from Peter Jackson, obviously. Um, uh, that's a really good one, actually, oh, of the metal metal yes. tuner there. Oh, tuner, wow. yep. Did anybody yeah. notice this before it was found that there was a tuner that was mismatched? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah. yeah. That was well known. Okay. Well, it wasn't really well known. That's like everybody's like, oh, my God, there was a metal tuner. But, like, you know, there were there were some some of us. It was neat. Okay. Yeah. It looks so close <laughs> to falling over. Yeah. And the, like the... this. <laughs> The foam mute, yeah. This is at, like the condition that they kept their kept their bases in, and you know, guitars. They just like threw it up against an amp. Yeah. Also Thumbs interesting, around. the basement sticker is on the side, and later yeah. you see it on the top as well, yeah. and on the the you know sixty three. So I, he must have had a lot of these basement stickers from Fender Did when they shipped it. Did he get them from something. your uh, Etsy channel or whatever? I was going to say <laughs> they're on sale now. On Please visit three Savile Row dot com for yours. <laughs> Um, right, so and then on ooh, that's a cool uh, photo. yeah so late, later you don't see it for a while but then on um january 24th 69 he brings out the rick because glenn john says paul do you have another bass that you can try and he's like okay and this day you see the epiphone Rivoli, the rick and it's just a really great shot of um, i just i just uh, noticed that strap too on the on the yeah. Rivoli. this white is that one? what you were going to say mm -hmm. don Stay on that photo because what did you guys think when this scene popped up and get back when you watched it for the first time? Because everyone thought that the base had been stolen at Twickenham. I remember I was watching it with my buddy Grant, who's been on here before. We just freaked the hell out. Oh, yeah. my God. They didn't steal it at Twickenham. They, it's well, at Savile Row. So, so uh, actually, everybody else react before I go off on another tangent. I'll be honest. My reaction was I had no clue about this at the time. So I did, what the wasn't... heck is this? <laughs> I thought it was neat because like folks are so definitive about like the, this guitar was used on this track. There's no way it was something yeah. else. And then we saw the Rickenbacker being yeah, used that was pretty surprising, which no one had that thought of cool. before. Yeah, yeah. Anybody? It else was it was kind of this piece of history that everyone kind of accepted as fact, but then you see the bass literally at a place where it should not have been, according to you know history it was, yeah. was kind of cool to see just, i'm still waiting yeah. for paul to pull out the rivoli in concert <laughs> for the Bought true the beatles all right too. all right there guys this one yeah. this is an oldie <laughs> anyway this is back's like ah uh, yeah. yeah uh anyway so you know um i i've i've always been obsessed with this particular bass like i've gone through so much because um back during covid um, I decided to have one made. And so I tried to scrounge up as many pictures and all that stuff. And so I stumbled upon a picture and I believe it was taken by one of the Erevans of both of the tweed cases in, um, in the Hofner closet with the Rivoli on top. So that's when you first kind of like, Whoa, what's that base? And so everybody kind of brushed it off. Like, Oh, it was probably just a rental that they threw in the closet with, with all the other gear. Um, and so you see the two, and I'm like, well, wait, if both of the cases are there, that means it wasn't stolen. And so that, I believe that was dated June of 69. And so it was like, it was cool to see that it was relevant and there during, um, during the Savile Row like sessions or whatever. Um, but yeah, it was uh, definitely, definitely an interesting, interesting. Sure. Yeah. There are some other shots of it, um, but uh, I, I missed, sorry, just two shots from earlier. I thought that was a good one. Um, and then that brings us really to a lot of people's theories was that uh, you don't see this base after 69 in any footage. So a lot of people for up until recently thought it was stolen in 69, maybe along with uh, George's Rick, uh, second Rick 12 string. And a lot of people think the Tennessean, although now we're saying that might not be true. Yeah. Um, but 
this kind of brings us to, yeah, what happened to the space after the Beatles? Does anyone want to? <laughs> Yeah, I can Start I that. can make an attempt at what I understand so far. So, uh, Nick Martellaro Martellaro has a good video on on this um, recapping what's been known. I'm for all I know, uh, you know, maybe more information will come out by the time this is posted, and we'll be look like fools, but we'll see. Um, we always look like fools. <laughs> what it seems like has happened, uh, I believe, it was initially discovered about. Uh, there was an article or a, l a little bit of a, a blurb in, I want to say it was the Daily Mirror magazine um, in October of 1972 about Paul's base having been stolen. Um, mm -hmm. And what it sounds like happened, I can't, was, I'm trying to remember the guy's name. Is it Ian Horn? Yeah. Um, he was the roadie, I think. And so after an or early, Wings. like, yeah, Wings concert, they locked the the 61 Hoffner and uh, some AC thirties or some, something like that in a mm -hmm. van and had it parked, locked up on the street. And then I think it was someone on that st street who lived on that street. Um, I think there was something about someone who was possibly known for stealing um, and uh, went and broke in and stole it. They came back stuff was stolen, obviously. Then that guy who's unnamed, uh, sold it to a um, pub landlord, the landlord of some pub. Um, mm -hmm. Ron Guest. And the, the guy who um, stole the Hoffner, his children, who are you know unnamed as of yet, um, claimed that he had no idea it was Paul's face. Yeah. And he, he sold it for a, a few pounds and some beers or something, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, to Ron Guest, who was the pub owner. Uh, which we'll get into. Yeah, and yeah, then so Ron local. Guest. He was local. They know that was Paul's establishment. So he had to have known that was Paul's base. All right, keep going. I don't know. I mean, think about, like, your dad. Oh, well, I guess, like, I'm just imagining well, my dad. My dad. Oh, yeah, yeah maybe, maybe your dad would have known. But I'm thinking, like, my dad. I would imagine a lot of people of the era would be like, I, this is just, like, weird young people music. I don't care about this. Like, why would they have any reason to Well, also, he sold it for, what, like, a few pounds and, and right. some beers. If it was Paul McCartney's, he would have tried to, yeah. you know, yeah. make some more money on it, right? Um, And then, so this Ron Guest uh, guy, he gave it to his son, his, his oldest son, who then died in a car crash. But I don't know how long after that that was. Um. And uh, his name is Graham Guest. And so the younger brother, Hayden, got it. And he had it up until he died in 2020. Um, and his wife... Uh, Kathy. I'm... Kathy, yeah. Kathy Guest, yeah. She... So there seems to be... This is the bit where we get a little confused. Um, so at some point, there was some kind of connection between her and the Lost Base Project or something... Either she was curious about it and looked up the serial number or someone maybe simultaneously made the connection to this Ron guest and looked for his family and then reached out to them. The way that I read it was that, so maybe we start talking about the Lost Base Project because what I, from my, what I understand is that um, Paul McCartney in 2022 reached out to, uh, is it Nick Wass was? Um, yeah. From Hoffner and said, I, I really want my old Hoffner. Can you, you know, your Hoffner, can you help me out? And so Nick um, started to research it and try to find it and teamed up with this husband and wife journal, uh, journalist team, the Joneses, I believe, um, who they all started Lost Base Project together. And they um, sent out some like, you know, stuff like, does anyone know anything, any leads? And some leads did come in. The first one was from Horn, Ian Horn, the the Wings roadie, who said this is when it got lost and stolen, rather. Um, the other lead was from the child of the guy who stole the base, came out and said, yeah, my dad stole the base. He had no idea it was Paul McCartney's. Um, and so with the, 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 those two pieces of information, things started to, to roll and they basically traced it to Ron Guest, so they knew it was in the Guest family. And then somehow, with all of that coming out, somehow Kathy Guest found out about 
all of this and what was happening and identified the base herself in the attic. We don't know exactly how that ha like who told her about this, but uh, Paul, were you going to say something? Uh, I'm just, uh, uh, just keep going because it just doesn't. It <laughs> it's doesn't, weird. No, it's, it's weird. Yeah, because it's just but how so? But that family member that had it. So when that guy died, not the not the dad that just died recently in 2020, but the other guy, Ron Guest. Yeah, yeah. His kid knew what it was. No, so I don't that, think so. Yeah, did you just say that, Sam? No. Well, did you say who, who, as far who as we was? know, the one who stole it, his kid. Um, or are you talking about the guy who? Wait, who are you talking about? <laughs> Rewind your story. You were saying that somebody, uh, when the Lost Base Base Project came about, you had that first guy that knew who, well, when it got stolen, and then who was the second? That was the roadie. Yeah, over? yeah. So the roadie was the first lead who said who it was stolen lead? in seventy two. The f second one was the the kid of the guy who stole the base. Not Ex that's not related to Ron Guest because. So the guy who stole it sold it for the pint to Ron Guest. So, but that's what I'm saying. He knew what that base was. That's what I'm saying. They knew somebody knew way way back what that base was. Not according to them, but I I understand yeah. what you're saying because well, it's like so, how do you not so know unique. that? It's such a unique yeah. looking base. Such it's a lefty unique. base, and apparently it's... they made it righty, you know, over time, and you know, and and the Guest family, whoever it was, I forget. They, there was some quote that they. They did play the bass often, mm. you know. Um, but yeah, so it went as Ryan was saying, Kathy Guess now is the the widow who's like the one who's the bass is in her attic. And she um basically yep. what happened from what I understand is that um the, she found out about this whole thing, identified it, and then contacted Paul McCartney herself before the Lost Base project could get involved. Um she wanted a reward of some sort and yeah. Paul got the base this we're filming this in February 2024 I think from what I read it was either September September or December September yeah so what Paul where have you heard it. September I've seen December in various places this is directly from the lost base project and Nick was um f from Hofner uh he says in their article it says September but initially what I heard was that um they had the base. Uh, Nick went and did the inspection. You know, that's where we get all the pictures and the up close, up close and all that stuff. And so what they were doing was Paul obviously was out on tour at that time. So the base was, you know, in his possession, which like wherever it was at his house in in London or um, in Scotland or, or wherever, wherever it was. Um, and so Paul didn't actually see it until he got back from Brazil, which was in December. So I believe the base was retrieved and, you know, they did the inspection process and all the legal paperwork um, and and it was sent to Paul's people. And then Paul hadn't seen it until December. That's really recently. It's kind of cool that we're like, you know, talking about this only like two months ago. It happened really that Paul was reunited. Um, wait, 63 to 2000. Yeah, 60 years later from like when Please Please Me was. Um, you think he would have used it on now and then if he had the chance? <laughs> Maybe go check out yeah. Michael Sokil's uh, cover of Now and Then. <laughs> it's yeah. This is his Hoffner. Yeah. Nope. Please note. do. I have a conspiracy theory here, and hear Ooh. me out. Oh. I think I think Paul released this news intentionally to stay in the news. I was thinking about this. So we have the Get Back movie. We have the Revolver remix. We have Now and Then. We have Eyes of the Storm. We have McCartney the lyrics. This dude knows how to stay in the news. Well, they also well, didn't even want to, stay to release it yet. The only reason it got Doing released it. is because yeah. the 21 year old son of Kathy started posting photos of it on Valentine's Day. Oh, that's a fair point. Yeah, yeah. He, he he post he posted it, and then someone posted it on Facebook. Quickly deleted it, and then we got those pictures, and we just started posting it. And so you just that same day you see like posts on all the Hofner groups and all that stuff. Please refrain from boasting about the base. Please stop. Just yeah, because the like, Lost Space Project was like they, they, it was their research that they, they had done. Yeah. It came yeah. to fruition, and but the Guest family like found out about it somehow before they could break the news. So to the Guest family, they're probably like, "I want to make some money off of this." I like it's we didn't hear anything about this Lost oh, Space they're Project. They're absolutely like, going to show up on some talk shows. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Well, well she's, so wait, she's already so, in the news. So the way that I found out was Dom. Dom, you sent a message to mm -hmm. our group chat and Instagram. How did you find out 
So I'm not going to name names. But there, was a, <laughs> there was a guy. A certain guy. There was, there was a guy who, who's. Uh, it was Paul McCartney, wasn't it? Yes, it was. He, he, he Here, I'll insert my, the uh, the bit he, he's, from December. Yeah, Paul slid into my DMs, right? And, yeah, <laughs> no. Mark so, felt deep. What throat. are you doing tonight? So yeah, you up? So basically, <laughs> so basically, it was like I, I couldn't sleep. Right, I just woke up. It was like three thirty in the morning. So it was early. Yeah. Oh yeah, super early. So I, one of my buddies who's out in Scotland, a guy I know, I wouldn't say a no, guy, but he's a guy <laughs> I know. He posted the photo, and I was like, "Wait, what the hell is that?" So I screenshotted it, and then ten minutes later, it was gone. Wow. Yeah. I, was like, I was like, "Yeah, yeah, no, 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 I'm not. We're not doing that." So. I said it to you guys. Liam saw it, and then he well, post he posted it on his account. On so his account, and then it blew up. It's that's, it's oh, so Liam was partially responsible for yeah. it going. Well, that's yeah, crazy! Absolutely. Wow. Well, here. So I don't I don't mean to. And uh, what day mean... are you talking about? Valentine's Day or what day are you talking about? This was the Thursday. Someone had posted Thursday. about it in a form. The yeah. day before, but it didn't so receive a whole lot of attention. I was in an airport and then like Dom sent these pictures and I'm like, holy crap. Like, you know, because I found, I found out a bit uh, about it through certain people. Um, so I've known for a little bit and then obviously I haven't had any pictures or anything like that. And so Dom sent it to, to us. And so I'm like, holy crap, like they're releasing it because from what I heard, they were supposed to do like a whole press conference in December, but you know, that never came and it got extended, extended. And so finally, like Dom sent these pictures and I'm like, holy crap. And so I post the picture on my story and then I get on a plane and then I'm flying back home to Philadelphia. We land and I turn my phone back on and then I just have like a million messages <laughs> re responding to my story. Where is this? What is this yeah, me from? Too. And, me too. and so it was it was Liam, Liam. And he's like, is this real? And I'm like, I'm like, uh, I'm like, yeah. And so he like asks all this stuff. And then two minutes later, like I'm getting in my car and I'm like, oh, Beatles history tour posted a new post. And I'm like, oh, OK. So it was, it was kind of cool just to see like it unravel. It was weird, like, though, because Lost Space Project, you know, I was saying for years they've been like, we're, we can't wait to, you know, finally find this thing. And yeah. then when all this was happening, I, I was in touch with them. And I was like, is this for real? And they're like, yep, press press conference coming soon but it wasn't them who broke the news it was the guest family i guess right so there's kind why of didn't, why didn't they post it that's so weird i I think they were waiting to do like a whole elaborate type well wasn't it the 21 year old like beat them to the punch or something yeah yeah like, like he started posting on twitter okay so you saw the photo of the most valuable base in history being used as a hat stand right yeah of course that's that was the awesome. photo i'm gonna set that as my like wallpaper wallpaper <laughs> on my phone so but let's it just it's hilarious it is like the greatest beatles gear moment i can remember it, like just yeah, that maybe the c series sure. being announced like oh, we yeah, were all yeah. giddy that whole day i feel like it would have been if it had been flipped with the timing of this and um john's j160 that would have been pretty cool um but i think by the time that john's j160 got recovered i don't think people realized how much it was being used in 63 but now we do. Yeah, and it's also that was like, kind of the same thing. J one sixty that we all know where it is. Right. Like, yeah. So, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, Maybe it's less iconic than the Hoffner. What did you guys think of the condition and the checking and all that? I wasn't surprised. Well, we like, should I mean, probably I just go think, over like, what do you the like condition it? of it. Or like, can we pull up photos? Do we have I, photos of it today? I I have all of all of them. If, if we do you want to do you want to just it? go through? Let's yeah, sure. Restored. There were some major issues, right? Yeah. Not not major. Well, I could just pull up the Lost Base Project uh, website. <laughs> Nick Nick Wass basically said, "Yeah, it could be; these things could be repaired very easily by an experienced luthier." Did that stuff good. all happen before December, or no? We don't know. We don't know. Okay, so we don't know if it's been repaired what? yet, like so, with a Nick reset so, or anything. Oh, oh, I thought I thought like the damage, like they just received the base and they just took like a a blade to it and started scoring it and stuff, <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> It's, it's checking you're relicking the base uh, yeah i'm really i'm gonna put it i'm gonna put it in a freezer <laughs> take a hair dryer to it yeah so i was anyway, shocked at how good it looked by the way like it looks yeah. exactly as i remembered it from the get back movie maybe yeah. a little bit aged but for a guitar that, that was missing for 52 years i think it looks phenomenal yeah that can was I my reaction say, too can i just say too that there's still a lot of people that don't believe it huh. they don't believe yes. this is the same base they believe that somebody actually did make this 
This yeah, kind of like the, the well, welcome to the internet. I mean, that's just yeah. what's gonna happen. Kind of like the people better. that uh, kind of like the people that think the Beatles use round ones. <laughs> <laughs> Seventy thousand views, man. Yeah, no, oh my, yeah, they don't at all. So anyway, um, extremely proud to uh, be a part of the major finding the lost base, and so this is uh, in September when Nick, uh, I believe he drove from uh, Bavaria, you know, but where the Hoffner factory is, he drove to uh, to England to inspect the base and authenticate it and everything like that. Um, so what's so going on with can... the bridge? <laughs> yes. Oh, so I the, mean, you know, it's <laughs> are there righty strings on that? Yeah, yeah. In that picture, yeah, yeah. The strings were definitely changed. They're not the original strings that Paul. These are long scale strings too. Where's the? Uh, you are those see... teacup knobs too? Yeah. Did the knobs get yeah. changed back? Yeah. Huh. So I believe we went over that, um, Michael. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <Screw you>. No. <laughs> I think I was peeing. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, they, they were changed back in uh, 66, weren't they? Uh, no, actually, before then, either really? late 64 or 65, because the picture where you first see the metal tuner as well, uh, the early? teacups. Yeah. No kidding. Yep. Um, so anyway, the you know, obviously, it's strung right-handed. The bridge was moved up. Um, and then... What does it mean that of... the bridge was moved up? Like, what? What? why? It's a floating <laughs> bridge. I mean, it just, yeah. it's just so happened to, you know... Why the did they do too. that? <laughs> they probably weren't real they... musicians. Yeah, yeah but like, no like, what very key much is amateurs. that thing being... Or, like, what tuning is that thing <laughs> in if it, the bridge is that far up? Oh, my drop gosh. C, probably. You I was just going to say drop C. <laughs> yeah, right. so, drop D. Yeah, we could see the, the checking. And then this is where uh, Nick rev uh, removed the... Um, the the uh the control panel and then finding out that this is actually a control panel from 64 and not the original one from 61 that's amazing yeah and then you could see this is the the original case too yeah. um, and that's what surprised me the most actually was that it had the original case for it yeah the arch back you can see on that too yeah right here um i'm going to try to find the picture they, of do uh, they really not have a picture of the back of the headstock on here no, that oh, was great. later on. We'll go to we'll go to okay. here. Let me stop streaming so I don't or I'll pause the stream here. It's paused, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to my Instagram and go to the lost base. Uh you paused. <laughs> you paused too. Am I? Yeah, it's oh. still sharing. <laughs> Dude. I, I love I, when that happens. I'm in I'm in like I live in the middle of, of nowhere. <laughs> Usually so it's anyway. Ryan who freezes, so yeah, yeah here let me nice funny. to have some variety let's change oh it. and it's such a horrible it's such a horrible freeze frame too oh, well, you look good you look good oh. <laughs> i don't know yeah. why it cracks me up every time somebody freezes i just love it and and of course zoom is not responding there we go uh yeah. all right i'm back i think this will all get cut out thankfully oh it's staying uh, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway yeah so this uh here's the back of the headstock um, you can see there's oh, the hang on, you're not sharing it. You're not, not sharing oh. your screen. Oh, is it still paused? No, no, you're just not you're just not streaming. You're just not sharing it. Oh my god. I'm so Damn sorry. Yeah. All and right. This is from nice. December, you said? Uh this is from September. Okay, this is from September as well. Oh, there's already yeah. making a comment. Gosh, I just love seeing yeah. that. I'm just so baffled nice. by this whole Gretsch Tuner <laughs> Tennessean thing. But uh yeah, there it is. Yeah, the um the 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 tuner. You could see it in depth with um, these tuners flipped, and then you could see the original holes from the original tuners mm -hmm. as well. Wait, Wait so does that there's mean... not a second screw on the uh, on the Gretsch tuner? Oh mm -hmm. yeah, there's there's a missing screw. Yep. Uh, sorry, I had a, a quest, quick question about the the D Gretsch tuner. Does that mean Paul would have had to uh, do it in reverse, or or am I wrong about that? Uh... Like. Wait, let me think. Like, was it flipped around where, like, you know, usually you go right, but he would have had to go like left, it. or? Yeah, it looks, okay. on the, on it looks the E the and the A. No, I just I read somewhere that the the D tuner was put on the wrong way or something, and he had to like mm. like tune it the the wrong way. No, I I think that was referring to the E and the A. I don't know if it was the D or not, because you can you can even see like the pattern of the yeah, uh, the screw is of, facing of the, the same grooves. Way. Right, right. Yeah, it's all the same. So, but busted. these would be yeah, these would be backwards, kind of like a kind of like a like a Rick bass, right. uh, like the the vintage Rick basses, the the tuning keys uh like were opposite, um, so he would have. I don't. Hmm. I can't even think off the top of my head what way he would have had to to screw it, but you know, I'm sure none of us are lefties. Out. Yeah, Theo's a lefty. 
You know, I just want to say, though, it is strange when they refinished this base. Who thought it was a great idea to take a perfectly fine looking neck and just spray paint yeah. orange line straight down yeah. the middle? Yeah. That Paul seems to have liked terrible. it according to his like review and the promotion of Sound City oh, at the I time. Know. Yeah. He's like, oh, they that did was the most job. shocking piece for me of these photos was seeing how shitty that neck looks. Yeah. I, you know, disgusting. like when I, when I was trying to replicate mine, like that was one thing that I really wanted. I, I kind of think the look of it is sharp, like the, just the orange pinstripe. Like I, it makes no sense. Like who in their right mind, like where do they get this from? Just like this orange pinstripe out of nowhere. Um, All, all this picture says to me is RIP Tenny. <laughs> Can we get a rip in the chat for the Tennessee? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, also like a, there's, there's like a 0% chance this is fake. Like the person who faked it would have had to know about the missing tuner. Yeah, they would yeah, have had to yeah, they would yeah. have had to make a video about the Tennessee and getting destroyed. Oh the my god. Absolute <laughs> greatest replica ever made of yeah, right. ever. The worst refinish. <laughs> uh I'm just realizing now. This is um uh just well, obviously the tuners are backwards, but look how just like off they are it's yeah like, oh i was my, i was noticing this? that in the pictures we saw earlier yeah it's crazy it's wild that, yeah and that that truss rod looks a little it's obviously a hopner truss rod but it's like a little looks odd. like there's two nuts so, on it i did want to go over no that's that's just the way the the hopner has a three piece it has a black line oh you know what when i read that i thought it meant three piece vertically not horizontally that makes more sense michael are you laughing because he said two nuts I wasn't laughing. How dare you? <laughs> I have a much more sophisticated sense of humor. Speak for yourself. It's bullshit. Dom, I think you were saying something. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It was the... Um, I wanted to go over the, the overall condition of the things that needed to be repaired on it. So... Um, we know that the pickups are dead. Yeah, pickups are dead, yep. Um, it needs a neck reset. There is a crack by the heel, I think. Um, yeah. Is there any pictures of it? No, not yet. Okay. Um, Nick said the tuner should be replaced if he wants it to be playable. I think. Uh, uh you know, it, it's it's very odd. I think because you know he played it. He played it for what two or three years that way, or not even two or three years, but he played it for for an extensive amount of time with the tuners like that. So I mean. If he's just trying to keep it as original as possible, I don't think. Well, original, as yeah. original as possible. Yeah, refinishing everything. Yeah, don't touch the tunes. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't you dare, Paul, if you're listening to this. I wouldn't want him to, but it, the camera's <laughs> fine. I won't. Don't worry. Yeah, do we think he's nostalgic for it <laughs> as refinished or as it was in '61? Because we remember John had his 325 rescinded back to when it was like maple glow mm. natural finish like Whoa. i would hate to see paul revert it that's back to how whole, it was in 61 oh boy that's the whole video i don't want to get into that guy that redid his guitar destroyed that guitar he didn't know what he was doing he oh, thought right. that he was redoing yeah. the miami 325 he didn't even know that was the 58 but keep going ruined it <laughs> so I, I i honestly think he's just glad to have the bass back i don't think he's like it's like i want it this way or that way like, I I personally think just from, like, my opinion and, like, putting myself in that kind of scenario, if I'm getting something back, I want it the way that it was the last time that I touched it. I don't want it, like, you know, completely redone and redid because what's the point of that? There's no history in it if you just strip it away and, you yeah, know, string it go up back to square Get one. it playing well and leave it alone. Yeah. And the yeah. thing is completely untouched, too. Look at it. I mean, it looks just like it was back in the day. Yeah. And any shows? So, do you think do you think he'll bring it out? I I don't I don't know. Uh, I don't. I think it's gonna be a a, a studio princess. I feel like that, he's gotta bring it out once. We'll or see. I was thinking too, he could donate it possibly, or do some kind of tour with it, or some kind of like you know. Oh, look at here is the Paul base, and it goes on like some kind of moving tour or something. I don't know. Well, I don't think he's going to play it, though, well, really. Well, pe people have been saying that about the Rick. Oh, maybe he's going to bring it out one last time. Yeah. Well, but, Rick you know, back and, if he did. I mean, well, he no. The, the thing is, is that he plays Les Pauls every show. Les Paul is 10 pounds. A Rick, especially after it was sanded down, is oh, like yeah. seven pounds, five pounds. So, 
That sounds like Beatles all. fan fiction, though. Like maybe Paul will break out the Rick one day. Maybe yeah, John would have gone on someone, tour with his three twenty five. Like, someone asked Paul on Reddit about that. Hey, Paul, are you gonna return to the Rick? He's like, you know, I use the Hoffman these days, but I keep telling myself that I'm gonna go back to the Rick someday, and that was like five years ago. Yeah, so I don't think I don't think he will. There was some rumor that he played it on uh, "Bite My Head Off" with the Rolling Stones, but there's no photo. That was um, a Fuzz a Hoffner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the Fuzz Hoffner, yeah. Yeah. But um, so apparently, I I heard at least from Lost Space Project that Paul was going to make some press conference or announcement himself about this new news, but I don't know. Yeah, I think I it was think... the three the three sentences we got on his blog. Yeah, that's it. He did. <laughs> Yeah. That was that was underwhelming. That was underwhelming yeah. as hell. I was actually pretty disappointed about that. It's a national news story. At yeah. the same time, Paul's too, happy. though, I wonder how much it really does mean to him all these years later. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, like there could be, th- there could be. At the same time, he's had his base for a little bit, and I'm sure he could have had this thing read that he could have. Anybody in this world that's a luthier would have took that base and worked 24 hours straight on that thing to get that thing in completely playable position condition. Well, so he could start playing it again. And he has not done that. Yeah. Well, we so, don't know. It's been about two months. Oh, Gio, I'm sorry. You're frozen again. <laughs> no, he's of course. Frozen. That's an unfortunate way he's to freeze. That's he's very unfortunate. No. <laughs> <laughs> this might get cut out. This is rated X. I didn't even know this. Is... <laughs> but Paul, the... I guess, Paul's I'm too busy, guest. I guess, being at the Super Bowl, hanging out with Taylor Swift to even care Taylor about Swift. the fact that yeah, he has I agree. Games. I think mm-hmm. Paul is not nostalgic, really, at all. I no, think he cares not. about success, being in the news, producing yep. new music to yep. his credit. Yep. Yeah. I don't think he's he cares a businessman. That That's the most Paul right. McCartney thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. Look at me. I'm Paul McCartney. <laughs> Can we mention that he had a repro of the Cavern Base in his studio? Yep. Do we? Do yep. we? Does anyone know the story behind that? I actually don't. Know. So, so it was. Um, it was. From what I've heard, obviously, I'm not hearing anything straight from the horse's mouth or anything. This is like, like I said, telephone line stories get watered down, washed down, yeah. details change. So the story I heard was when he first approached Hoffner and Nick Waz to try to, you know, start the Lost Space Project. And this was back in like 2018, I think. Um, and he's and so they're like, well, yeah, we'll we'll help you find it. But here's this in the meantime. And like they they made him that that reproduction because you see it in the find my way video too mm-hmm. in the background right. and everybody was freaking out about that oh my god they found his base so it's a much better looking repro than the ones hoffner actually issued too yeah Didn't they put out like a four thousand dollar version of a reproduction of the cavern base yeah they they did those those were interesting because it was like i mean like there was so many that they were making uh fab gear made a great line i i had one that for was a short, it. yeah for a yeah. short time fab gear made that and then hoffner did their own separate line and the hoffner line wasn't as like accurate like just color wise like it was kind of like a pinkish red yellow and black and the fab gear ones definitely had like that the the defender type burst and um you know and it really varied but uh i think it was I think that base kind of predates predates that whole thing. But yeah. So Gio, let me ask you, you've owned quite a few Hoffner bases by now, correct? Yes, I've owned quite a few. What do you think's the best? Do you like the German better than the CT and the icons and all that stuff? Um, well, obviously I'm like I don't mean to sound like a uh kind of make my son so- self sound douchey, but I don't I don't you know the 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 chinese made bases are great for the like a bang for your buck but you know once i got the german bases it's like a totally different realm like yep. i'm not mm-hmm. not like like sam asked me like a couple couple months ago he's like well what do you think about the contemporary base and i'm like they're like great bases if you're not wanting to spend three thousand dollars on a german base you just get it and put german electronics in it and you're good to go paul didn't even want like, to spend three thousand dollars on a german base <laughs> yeah so <laughs> So definitely the German bases, um, you know, they're Hofner, obviously they're handmade instruments. Um, and so it's, it's kind of like their, their quality control isn't as good as like, I don't know, Fender. I'm not even going to talk about Gibson because that's like a whole different type of thing, but, but like Fender or like these, these produ- uh, pro- uh, companies like uh, Rickenbacker where, you know, they're inspecting the instruments. Obviously Hofner does the inspection, but like I got my, brand new 60th anniversary um base 
And like I got it and had like a string buzz and all this type of stuff. Like if you get a Hofner set up right, it it'll it'll service you for years. Like like you know like the same thing with Paul's bass. He's been playing that bass for sixty years. It's seen like every country in the world. You know any any place that you can think of that bass has been. Well, I know because it sounds horrible. I, in one of my videos, I recommended the people that they should get a CT base or at least mm -hmm. buy the icon or upgrade the icon to the CT in the holiday thing I made. But I've never even played a CT. I've never even played yeah. an icon before. I've only they aren't the anywhere ones. close to a German one. Yeah, I've had two CTs. That's a CT. I'm very satisfied with it. Sounds like a Hofner, easy to play. Then I visited Perry Stanley and played his German Hofner, and I was like, yeah. oh, this is a Hofner. You know, oh, okay. It just plays yeah. so much better, sounds better, so much looks lighter better. too. I've only yes. ever played it's like my, a different guitar, yeah. yeah. Four hundred dollar Chinese one. <laughs> yeah. Those are good for what you. Those, it sounds great. Yeah, it those sounds are great, Ryan. Good bases. Those are great bases for 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 the money. But I mean, if if you're if you're able like to spend that type of money, or if you want to spend that type of money, the German bases are are just perfect. They're amazing. Like, yeah. they're no, 10, they're so percent better. Yeah, yeah, they're they're so comfortable to play. Paul, which ones do you have behind you? I have a V62 and a V64, which awesome. the V64, honestly, I posted up for sale on Reverb today just because <laughs> of uh, the Instagram. People voted that they like the V62 better, so I figured, you know what, there's no point in me owning two Hofners at this point because I don't really play bass. So, Yeah. The, I, just, you know, I got good deals better. on these things. That's why I have them. Yeah. Hofner has, Hofners have gone like – so so like they've jumped so much like i remember when i first started getting into collecting hoffners were like 1500 bucks german hoffners i'm talking about yeah. 1500 yeah. two thousand dollars at the most now they're four four grand like three grand i'm like yeah what like it's crazy the prices are insane for everything right now yeah yeah <laughs> okay <Well>. sorry my <laughs> oh you're good should well, we anything uh... else you guys want to add to the enjoyment of this episode i mean whoever's watching this this long is just knee deep and just absolutely loves us anyways plus dom you keep buzzing so i might as well just bring up the fact of that the tennessee is definitely gone because of the fact that uh, we see the switch on the les paul yes all right we'll talk about it later we'll talk about it later we, Can we talk about end this nonsense. This is like on the a two-hour episode. Um, my goodness. Forty-five minutes. Before we end off, Gio, I want to thank you for coming on here. <laughs> yeah, thanks minute. so much. Um, yeah, when yeah. we do, when we do, uh, whenever we get around to doing the sixty-three, I definitely want you to come back on here. Um, check that out goes for anything. Man. Check out Gio's YouTube channel. You could probably link it in the description. Um, YouTube, Instagram, anything really. Yeah. You know, follow and, me. Uh, yeah, follow him. Yeah. All well, guys, that about wraps it up, huh? Yeah. Could I Thank ask one so final much. question before we part? I'm sorry. Would you guys agree this is like the biggest Beatles gear moment of the past 50 years? Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. I just say I thought John's Day was 60 John, years bigger than me. John's Day was 60 is, is pretty big. Yeah. I'm more of a guitar person, so the bass thing. It, I think this is great, but I like the Jay was 60 better, honestly. For me, the um, Lucy Les Paul was stolen as well, and I. I mean, that one's like one of my favorite guitars of all time. So the fact that that was recovered and brought back to George just means a little more to yeah. me. But from Mexico, and he had a haggle with the guy. I mean, that's probably a more incredible story in itself if we knew the whole Went thing, detail to detail. I would yeah. say if uh, the J160 hadn't been resprayed the way it was, my gosh. Yeah, it looked <laughs> gross. Yeah, agreed. Um, I think the next step now, because we know the Tenny's gone forever. It's probably, again, it probably ended up as, as toothpicks somewhere, but um, I think the next step will be trying to find George's second Rick. That'd be pretty yeah. cool. Keep a lookout for that. Yeah. Is that the only thing that's still missing? Well, the possibly major? the other gent, right? Yeah. The Framus. Well, oh, right. The Framus oh, has got to be destroyed by now. It's Out done. It fell apart. Um, but I think that's it, really, when it comes to Beatle instruments. All right. Then we can get Holly's instruments. The Rivoli bass. Tony's ES345 go. got sold on eBay like 10 years ago. And I missed it. 
What is this band you speak of? The Hollies? I've never heard of them before. Uh, well, thanks for watching, don't everybody. Have a great night, guys. <laughs> All right. Bye. See you in the thanks next for time. having me, guys. Uh, thanks for coming on, Gia. Awesome.